Hello everyone, I'm Todd. Welcome back to my first tutorial in Java. In this segment, we'll see user-defined methods in Java. And by the end of this presentation, you'll be able to write and call your own methods in Java. But before continuing this session, if you haven't watched my previous tutorials, I highly encourage you to visit my YouTube channel and watch all the videos in there if you can. If not, Please watch the part that talks about the difference between object and class so that you'd get the best out of this presentation. And if you have questions or comments, please email me through this address and I'll reply as soon as possible. Now, let's back into the midst of today's lesson. In this lesson, we'll talk about physics of methods in Java. Specifically, we'll talk about user-defined methods in Java. Then, we'll see why methods are useful. The third point that we will learn would be method declaration and components of method. Finally, we'll have discussion on method calling calling method by creating object and calling method without creating object. All right, let's start. In Java, a method is a section of code that has a name and by using this name, we can call it over and over again without duplicating the code here and there. Giving them to a method allows programmers to deal with potentially very complicated tasks as a single operation. In Java, all methods should be inside a class, but one method should not be inside of another method. Each method needs to be declared in itself. Once a method is written and given its own distinct name, you can execute it as many times as you want simply by using its name. Let's see examples of a method in Eclipse. Let's start up Eclipse. Let's go to File, New, Java project and let's name this project. Let's give a name for this project. Let's say there's file and let's say finish. Now we're gonna add a new package within this project. New package and let's call this package as first prop pack and let's say finish now let's create a class within this package right make a right click new and then class and let's write the name of our class let's say the name of our class would be fair Class. Now let's include our main method in there. Now let's fin hit finish. Let's get rid of this guy from here because we don't need it. By the way, the main method in Java is a method which is used by JVM. Java Virtual Machine to start execution of any Java program. So, execution starts from the main method. Now, let's write a method that would say hello world. Public, static, void, take. Let's say our method name is take it. 
and let's put parentheses and curly braces as well. Now let's write a simple a simple program that says hello world. That's why I saw pointer and let's write that call. Hello world. Let me add some points in it. Please take it one day at a time. Oh, this is awesome. Let me put exclamation mark in it. And now let's call let's go back to the main method and call our user defined methods in there. Take add parentheses and semicolon. Let's run it and let's see. Okay, there you go. Our method printed out all over load. Please take it one day at a time. Here, I want you to notice one important point. As you can see in our program, we have two methods, the main method and the take it method. The main method is called a predefined method. The main method is a method that comes with Java, whereas take it is a user defined method. This is a user-defined method because we have created this method. And our focus in this discussion will be on user-defined method. Now, let's explore why methods are useful. Methods are useful for the following reasons. Number one, methods are useful to reduce the code size. The smaller the length of the code, the more the code is understandable. Methods are also useful to reduce code complexity. In addition to that, Methods are helpful to support easy manipulation and calculation of values. The fourth importance of methods in Java is to organize the code and enhance maintainability of the code. In short, methods in Java make our code manageable and more reusable. The other point that I would like to discuss in this session is method declaration and components of method. In general, method declaration in Java takes this form. We have the modifier, return type, method name, parameters and statement. The method name and parameters together are called method signature, whereas the statements or the implementations, the implementation of the method is called method body. Now, Let's see components of method piece by piece, starting from modifiers. Modifiers tells the compiler how to call a method. Modifier define the access and visibility of a method. In other words, modifiers set the level of access a programmer wants for his or her method. 
For example, public, private, and protected are examples of modifiers. For instance, if a method is declared public, it will be accessible to all classes, either from the same package or different package. But for now, don't worry about modifiers. You'll learn about them in our subsequent discussion. Let's see the other components of method. Return type. Return type refers to the data type of the value returned by the method. Sometimes return type can be void. And if it is void, which means the method doesn't return a value. The other components of method is method name. Every method in Java has its own name. This is the actual name of the method. Methods can be invoked at any point in the program simply by utilizing their name. The fourth component of method in Java is parameter. Parameter is variable in a method definition. Remember, I've said that parameters are also called local variables. Local variables are variables that are declared inside a method. So parameters are sometimes also known as local variables. When a method is invoked, you pass a value to the parameters, and that is called argument or that is referred as argument. A method may or may not have parameters. Argument is the actual value that you pass when a method, when a method is invoked. The other component of a method is statement. Statement defines what the method does. It is an instruction that the computer executes when the method is invoked or accessed. Now let's write our own method in Eclipse. I believe we have enough information to write our own method. So let's start writing our own method that would print out some message for us. Let's open up Eclipse and let's create a new project. And let's call this project me project. And let's say finish. Now let's create a package within this project. And let's call this package as MIP pack. And let's say finish. And now let's add a class within this package and call it this class. Let's call this class as me met class. And let's include our main method in there and let's see finish. After this, the first thing that we need to do is to set the access level of the user defined method or our method. 
let's get rid of this and let's for example let's say our method we need our method to be accessible both outside as well as inside the package so we can set the visibility as public let's say public and the next thing that we need to do is to put a static keyword in there static keyword which indicates that we're not creating an object for this class the third thing that we need to do is to set the return tab in our case it's gonna be void which means the method doesn't have return tab or doesn't have a return value and finally let's give a name to our method and let's say the name is get it go and let's put our parentheses in there and the curly braces as well between these curly braces let's write our code or instruction let's say we would like to print out a cliche uh, that cliche reads as follows so y s o control space let's write our cliche in there all world always look on the right side that's cool and now let's call this method in our method main method and let's say let's write the name of the method get it go parenthesis and semicolon and let's run it and let's see okay there you go see the output down here in the console says always look on the bright side let's see one more example on creation of method let's see new we can we can have a new method within this project itself let's click and and let's write <clears throat> let's say we need a method that would print out the message you're learning user defined methods in java let's say let's set our accessibility level public because we want this method to be visible inside and outside the package and let's say let's write the static keyword because we don't need it to create object for this class so let's say let's put a static keyword static and the return tab let's say we don't need any value or this method doesn't have any value so let's set it void and finally let's give a name for it and let's say this method name is learner and or learn and let's say the learn let's say let's put our parentheses in there and curly braces as well and let's write the message that says your learning is a defined methods in java so let's put s y s y s o control space here and let's put the quotation in there and let's say you are learning 
user define uh, in Java. And now let's go back to our main method and let's call this method there there parenthesis semicolon and now let's run it let's see okay there you go the output in the console is printed out it says your learning is a defined method in Java. This is simply how you write your own method in Java. Now let's see calling method in Java. Method calling means executing our instruction. A method doesn't actually get executed until it is called. By calling our method, we can execute all the instruction inside the method. Please note that every user-defined method should be called from the main method. The main method is a place where execution starts. At least this is true from the core Java point of view. Types of method calling. In Java, we have two types of method calling. The first one calling method by creating object and the second one calling method without creating or invoking object. Let's see each type of method calling one by one. Let's start with calling method by creating object. To call a method by creating object, first we need to create object. How do we create object? The syntax for creating object goes like this. The reference type, object name, new, and object time. Please keep in mind that the reference time must be more general or the reference type at least must be the same as the object type. Once we created object we can call the method simply by using the method name and by using this simple syntax the object object and the dot operators the dot operator gives access to our method and then the method name and parameter if we have any parameters and when our method has a return value, the return value can get assigned into a variable like this. We will have data type of the return type, variable name, and the assignment operator, and the object that we have created, and the dot operator, and the method name, and parameter if we have any parameter. Let's see examples in Eclipse. Let's start up Eclipse and let's create a project. Paul new and Java project. And let's name this project. Let's call it C-A-L and let's say finish which means call and let's create a package within this project 
and let's call this package pack pack all and let's say finish now let's create a class within this package and let's call this class as method class and let's include our main method in there and let's say finish and let's remove this guy from here and let's start writing our own method now. Let's create a method that would print out your bank account or your bank saving account. Let's say public void bank account. Um, let's put our parentheses in there. Let's put this curly braces. And between our curly braces, we're going to write our simple code that is going to tell us your saving account amount. So let's say SYSO Control Enter. And let's write the code in there. Let's say your saving count has seventy five thousand dollars. Wow, that's a lot of money. Now let's go back to our own method and call our, our main method and let's call this method. Um, but first we need to create object. So let's create object. How do we create object? We're going to use the reference type, object name, and then new keyword, and then object type and then parentheses and semicolon. So in our case, the reference type and the object type would be the same. So let's use our class name. Make, let's put our object name, bang, and let's put our assignment operator is equal to new main. And let's put parentheses and let's put semicolon. Let's make it M uppercase. And there you go. Now let's call our method. V the dot operator, here it comes, bank account. And let's see, finish. Now let's run it. Let's hit OK. There you go. The result is printed out in the console and it says your saving account has $75,000. Let's see one more example. And this method is going to greet everyone when it comes to your home. Let's write this method. Public void and let's say say hi. And let's put our parentheses in there and let's put our curly braces as well. And let's write our simple instruction or code that says or that gives greeting to whoever comes in our home. So let's say SYSO control space enter SYSO control space enter 
and let's write the instruction in there. Let's say good morning everyone. And let's put exclamation mark in there. Now let's go back to our main method and let's call this method. But first again we have to create object. So how do we create object? We need to use the general syntax that is the reference type. In our case the reference type is a class name and the object name would be good morning is equal to or the assignment operator and let's say new new mid now let's put parentheses in there and let's put semicolon now let's call this method gd the dot operator in order to access our method and it say let's see say and enter and let's say now let's our method is accessible and let's run it and let's see it. okay and here you go good morning everyone is printed out here in your console now let's see when our method has a return value along with along with it we'll see how method how to sign the value into a variable. So let's let's create another method in here public and sum. And this method is gonna give us a return value. And let's put uh, some int variables int a comma int b and let's let's say let's put our curly braces in there and let's hit enter and let's now put the result int result is equal to a plus B semicolon and let's have a return keyword in there. Return result semicolon and let's put a space in it. Because the method has a return, the return keyword at the end is a must and there must be a return care return keyword otherwise the java compiler won't compile it now let's go back to our main method and call this method but first we have as we have done previously let's create object how do we create object reference type mt t and let's say the object or the variable name is sm su is equal to let's say new new metd parenthesis semicolon and now let's and this line of code always create object and the next thing that we need to do is to create a variable that can store our return value so how do we create a variable let's say int 
y is equal to su dot sum let's see it in and let's put a value in there 4 and 10 what this line what this line of code would do is it will sum the value of 4 and 10 and will assign the value into a variable y and let's display let's put semicolon back there and let's display the result now let's say syso control space it enter and let's say let's write a message on it the sum is equal to plus y this plus sign is a concatenation operator and now let's run it and let's see okay there you go the sum is 14 let's see one more example that has a return value let's say we need a method that return a cube of numbers so let's write our method let's say public int cube parenthesis semicolon curly braces excuse me and let's write the code inside the curly braces and let's say int cube or int result is equal to the cube of any number is when the number is multiplied by itself three times so let's say let's put our variable in there the local variable in there and let's say in c let's say c multiply by c multiply by c and let's see enter let's put semicolon in there let's see enter now let's return let's return the result and let's put semicolon in there now let's create let's go back to our main method and call this user defined method let's create an object to create an object we have to use the reference type method and let's say cu is equal to new new method and let's put parenthesis and let's put our semicolon in there now let's access this method so let's call this cu dot operator but before that like i said if it has a return value then we need to store this value into a variable so to store this variable we need to create a variable so let's let me create a variable int d is equal to cu and then the dot operator and then here is our method hit enter and let's pass our argument let's say we need a q of six what this line of code would do is that it would return the q of six and store the value in our variable called variable d and now let's display the result syso 
control space hit enter let's let's write uh, the message let's say the cube of your number is equal to plus concatenation operator D and then now let's run it let's see okay and let's because we have some error we have to put semicolon in in there now it's, we're good uh, let's run it. Let's uh, hit OK. S As you can see, the cube of our your number is 216-2116. It's printed out in your console or in our console. So far, we have written and called method by creating object. Now, let's see how to call a method without creating object. Please note that in Java, in, in some cases, we may not need to create object in order to access or call a method, which means we can directly call the method without calling or without creating object. Well, let's create a new project so that it will be clear and understandable for you. Let's call this project without object. And let's see, finish. And let's add a package within this project. Let's make it right click, new, and then package and let's call this package without object pack and let's say let's say finish and let's create a class now within this package right click new and class and let's name this class or let's give a name for this class without object class. And let's include the main method in there. Let's say finish. And let's get rid of this guy from here because we don't need it. Now we can write our own method without in this class. So let's say public static int odd. And let's put parentheses in there. Let's put our curly braces in there. And let's say, because it's going to odd numbers, let's pass our argument in there. Let's say int, or let's put a parameter int, int e semicolon int f. And between our curly braces, we're going to write our instruction. Let's say int m is equal to f e plus f semicolon and now let's return the result return and semicolon let's go back to the main method and call it because this method has a return value as you remember we need to create a variable to store the the value or the return value so how do we create it? This is simple. Int x is equal to 
and then we can call now our method and let, what is the name of our method odd and let's put parentheses in there and let's put semicolon and let's put pass our argument now let's say the number that we would like to be added are 10 and 7 Whatever number we are entering, this method, this method called evaluate and return the addition of the two numbers and store the value into a variable called x. Now, let's display the result in our console. SYSO, control F, and let's write the message in it the value of x is equal to plus x and let's run it and let's hit ok there you go as you can see, the value of x is 7. I think we need, we have done some errors here because in the state of, in the state of plus sign, we put equal sign, so we didn't get the summation of uh, 10 and 7. So let's make a correction on it. Let's put addition sign in it. And now let's run our code again. Let's see. Okay, there you go. The value of x is 17. The sum of 10, 10 plus 7, it will give us 17. Let's see one more example. Say public static double say division and let's put parentheses in there and let's put our curly braces and let's between our curly braces we can write our code let's say double result is equal to n1 let's say let's pass our parameters in there, double and one comma double and two. Let's put a space in it so that Java compiler won't be confused. So let's now divide the N1 by N2. N1 forward slash we, we, we put forward slash because this is our division work in Java. So let's say N2 and semicolon. Now let's return the result. Return semicolon. Return result semicolon. Now let's go back to our main method. And let's call this method. To call this me method, we need to create a variable to store our double. So let's say double double j is equal to division and let's write division. division. Region. and let's put parentheses in there and let's let's put semicolon now let's pass our variable or argument in there let's say 10 
dot two and another parameters to dot five. Now let's display the result in the console. To display it, we can use this Y S all control hit enter and let's write the message in there. Your double is equal to plus variable name the concatenation operator and the variable name is g now let's run it and let's see okay there you go your double is equal to 4.08 and as you can see the result down here is a double variable or double. Let's see one, let's see another example of calling method without creating object. And let's write a method within this class. And now this method, we need the, a method that that is going to appreciate efforts of people. So let, let me write the method. Public, static, void, let's say, good job, would be our method name. Let's put parentheses and our curly braces in there. And between our curly braces, we need a method that appreciates efforts of people. So let's say, let's write a simple code. Why so in there? And let's see, Control V, and let's write our appreciation in there. Let's say you have come this far. Let me add one sentence in there. Nice job. And now let's go back to our main method and call this method. For methods that do not have any return value, we do not need any variable. So simply we can call the method by a name like this. Because this method doesn't have a return value, we don't need a variable to store the value. Co rather, we can call the method simply like this, good job, parentheses, and semicolon. And let's run it. And let's see, OK. There you go. The method printed out our appreciation. You have come thus far. Nice job. Let's see one more example so that the concept will sync. Let's say, let's, let's say uh, we need a method that, anchor it, that, that gives encouragement to people to be strong whenever they have challenges. So let's say public static void be strong. And let's put our parentheses in there. Let's put the curly braces as well. And let's write the message in this uh, method. Let's S Y S O control space. Control space enter. Control space enter. And let's write the message in there. You have been 
string with yeah the string is to do anything exclamation mark let's go back to our main method and let's call this method be strong be strong name parenthesis and semicolon and now let's run this and let's see okay there you go our method is encouraging people and please note that for the above example we didn't create object because we have the keyword called static so all those methods that we have seen consists of a keyword called static keyword remember whenever we have a static keyword we don't need to create object for that class so we have seen in java i have already stated that in java in some cases we may not need to create object in order to call method we can directly call the method as you see here under and as we have seen in the example the method name parameter if any if it doesn't have a return value but if it does have a return value then you need to put that value or you need to return that value and store that return value into a variable or any kind of variable so that in that case you need to have Variable so data type variable name is equal to method name parameter if there is any in your method. Now let's summarize what we have seen so far in this lecture. Method is a set of code which is referred by name and can be invoked at any point in the program simply by utilizing the methods method's name method in java allows us to store a group of instruction in a specific location and call upon it as many times as we want by utilizing its name every method in java could be declared inside a class or should be declared inside a class in java every execution starts from the main method and the main method is the entry point and it is the first met method invoked when the program runs. At least this is true from the core Java point of view. Calling a method in Java refers to execution of instructions or it is referred to the running of our code. Methods in Java can be called or invoked either through creating object or without creating object. And that ends my tutorial on user-defined methods in Java. I hope that gives you some inklings how to write and call methods in Java. Thanks for watching. Please check on my next tutorial and subscribe my channel.